Now there are a lot of choices you have to make when spending your evolution points. Adapting in the right ways can really take your gameplay to the next level, but specking into the wrong abilities and stat combos can actually end up reducing your build's viability. There are a lot of traps players can fall into when choosing which perks they want, so today I want to talk about the 5 most common pitfalls that I see in the builds of today's metagame. Mobility is a costly stat. Movement costs energy, and careless overuse of it can drain your stamina to a dangerous level. If your stamina gets low, your HP will start to go down too, so inefficiency can pretty quickly lead to a game over. For example, the hummingbird needs to find an energy source every 10 minutes or it's game over. Being able to hover in place and having full 360 degree motion costs a lot energetically speaking, so it's super easy for them to burn through their stamina and eat into their HP reserves. The same can be said about shrews, which have to eat up to two times their own body weight per day just to not burn out. Cheetahs experience this issue to some extent too. Their top speed outclasses all other land builds, but this ability has an extremely long cooldown because when it's used, it burns through a ton of stamina. It generates a lot of body heat, and since cats can't sweat, this heat cannot be dissipated on the move like it can in humans, for example. Personally, I think this style of gameplay is extremely risky. It's high risk, high reward though, since obviously all three of these builds offer pretty unique advantages. Hummingbirds have agility that can match that of the dragonfly, cheetahs have record-breaking speed, and shrews have a venomous bite. So, tool use is one of the most broken abilities in the game. Among other things, tool use allowed humans to ascend to top tier and dominate the meta. Other builds can use tools too, and can mitigate the shortcomings of their stats and abilities. Chimpanzees can't dig particularly well, but they can still access termites by using tools, and can do so because they've specced into hands instead of paws or hooves. Cephalopods have horribly low defensive stats, but they can still block attacks using tools. They can do this because they not only have the intelligence required, but also because they have suction cups that can grab items instead of just having fins. But there are a lot of builds that have the intelligence required to use tools, but can't due to a lack of dexterity. Builds like dogs, dolphins, and pigs all fit that description. Now obviously all of those builds are anything but low tier, but I do think it's their biggest shortcoming. One of the biggest pitfalls I see struggling players fall into is that after they get bodied in the server several times, instead of continuing to evolve and trying to come up with a counter strategy to whatever is defeating them, they'll instead invest some points into nocturnal abilities and avoid the issue entirely. That sounds like a smart play, but all you're doing is nerfing your own character, wasting precious evolution points, and playing on easy mode. In most servers, the day lasts longer than the night, so daytime players have much more time to gain experience. Notice how prosimians are always nocturnal, except on Madagascar where they don't have to contend with apes and monkeys. Notice how bats are nocturnal, except the ones that have specced into a bulky enough build that they don't have to worry about hawks and eagles as much. More and more players are making this mistake because of human activity during the daytime, and it's severely hampering their ability to improve and overcome the increasingly challenging human matchup. This next one is a two-parter having to do with teeth and tooth regeneration. Teeth are one of the most common weapons in the game, and there are a lot of special perks teeth can have. Hypodermic needle teeth are perfect for dealing venom damage, serrated teeth deal bonus bleed damage, Pointy teeth make it harder for the target to escape a grab combo. Large teeth give you a passive intimidation bonus and can work as a disjointed hitbox. The list goes on. But for players that use teeth as a main part of their game plan, the ability to regenerate teeth can be critical. The first mistake I see players make is having brittle teeth without specking into the tooth regeneration perk. Without this ability, breaking a tooth can be a game ender for builds like lions or wolves. So if you rely on teeth as your main source of damage, be sure to choose the regeneration perk as one of your abilities, to ensure you don't incur a devastating damage debuff by breaking your teeth. Look at sharks and crocodiles for examples of top tier builds that constantly replace their teeth. Okay, but on the other end of the spectrum, if you're playing a non-DPS build, I really don't recommend having too good a tooth regeneration ability. It might seem like something that you'd always want just in case, but many players end up running into the opposite problem. They don't use their teeth enough and actually end up taking damage when their teeth grow too long. Many warthog, rodent, and rabbit mains lose the game because their teeth weren't used enough to keep them from growing out. So the point here is, if you're a DPS player, tooth regen is a great perk, 
If you're a non-DPS player, you may want to think twice and make sure you really need it before choosing this perk. The techniques that a high intelligence stat grants you access to are the most broken techniques in the entire game, but they require time to master, and are also best learned by having another player use the teach skill. If your build has a short lifespan, it's very difficult to gain the experience required to perfect these techniques. Builds like the crow and octopus, although just as smart as parrots and elephants, can never hope to achieve the same level of knowledge and wisdom. The reverse is true too. A build with an extremely long lifespan but low intelligence is being equally wasteful of their potential. Thanks again for watching, and thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon. Until next time, good luck out there.